All right, so in this uh, second lecture on uh, resistivity measurements, we're going to talk about how to actually measure resistivity in the ground. And uh, we'll continue with that into a uh, third lecture. And first, we need to recall what the definition of res resistance versus resistivity uh, would be. So uh, recall that uh, the units of resistance are ohms, and it's only relevant to a particular circuit. You know, a particular device, particular circuit. Uh, resistivity is an intrinsic property of all physical materials, uh, like density. You don't need a particular uh, circuit. Um, you make up circuits out of particular geometries, particular con configurations, particular um, constructions of um, materials, um, objects that have uh, different resistivity properties. Now, there's also the concept of apparent resistivity, which is uh, uh, an estimate of that resistivity property that is based on uh, an assumption of half-space geometry. Okay, and going between that uh, apparent resistivity uh, estimate to a uh, uh, some kind of model uh, that has the different uh, uh, resistivities of the different materials. Uh, different earth materials, especially at different depths and positions. That's a process of modeling. Okay? Uh, resistivity, as you remember, has a, uh, uh, a definition of ohm meters, ohms times meters. So first of all, looking at a wire, we can calculate its resistance um, by taking the, uh, the uh, resistivity of the uh, material that that the wire is made out of. That's rho, the Greek letter rho. And then we multiply that uh, resistivity by the length of the wire, and we divide by the cross-sectional area, A. Okay, and that gives us the resistance. We can also go the other way, okay, and uh, we can calculate the, uh, the resistivity by taking the resistance R, okay, in ohms, and multiplying by A and dividing by L, right? That way we get uh, the same, uh, uh, where we get the uh, resistivity property measurement. So think about how to do that um, <clears throat> on, a, uh, on a rock sample. You know, we'll have this cylindrical uh, core sample here. And <clears throat> what, we, um, what we have to realize first is that we can't just uh, take out our resistivity meter, um, like you uh, would find in our toolboxes, and, uh, um, and put the, the, the probes on each end of the, uh, of the rock sample and, and uh, measure the, uh, the resistivity. The problem is, is that the, uh, the probes are going to have some contact resistance uh, against, the, uh, uh, against the surface of the rock. And the surface of the the surface of the sample, and that's because uh, you know rocks are not as uh, incredibly uh, uh, conductive as uh, as metals and and the other things that we're used to probing in, in circuits, you know, like in your physics lab classes. So we have to um, we have to find a way of measuring the uh, the resistivity property. Uh, and the resistance that does not depend on the contact resistance. Okay, um, so we have uh, 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 we have this method which uh, uses uh, a pair of uh, of current electrodes. Okay, which are in red, called C one and C two. Okay, and those electrodes are you know, connected across each other into a current source, which is this uh, thing in here, and that puts in a constant or at least measured uh, current uh, through the rock sample between the electrodes. Notice that they are on the outside, and then uh, that that current, you know, having been measured, it's also you know in the circuit, it's passing through the rock sample, you know, through its cross section. Right, that current is going to yield is is going to you know, since it's um, going across a uh, uh, a material of of non-zero resistivity, 
okay, there's going to be a voltage drop as you get as you go from one electrode, one current electrode to the next, and we span you know part of the distance between those current electrodes with our potential or voltage electrodes, P1 and P2 potential electrodes, uh, which also we wrap around the, the rock sample, okay, and they are uh, uh, you know some distance apart, but they are inside the uh, uh, the current electrodes and in between them, and so uh, that is uh, those two current. Uh, excuse me, those two potential electrodes, P1 and P2. That's where we put our probe and uh, use a voltmeter to measure the uh, uh, the resistance across the. Uh, or, I'm sorry, to measure the uh, the voltage difference across the distance between P1 and P2. And that's how then we get uh, the resistance equal to uh, the uh, uh, the voltage difference divided by the current, and then we can translate that, knowing the the length and the area of the of the rock sample. We can we can translate that to a resistivity. Okay, so resistivity measurement in the ground is really uh, not uh, very different from this. Um, we set up. Current electrodes, okay, and here in, in general is uh, what's called the uh, the dipole dipole array. So we set up current electrodes somewhere, all right, and somewhere else, maybe between them, maybe outside them, uh, we set up our voltage electrodes, our potential electrodes in green, okay, which measure the uh, the voltage uh, differences between them, and uh, this is how all uh, uh, DC Electrical resistivity surveys proceed, and you can do these in 2D and 3D. And we actually have software from uh, Multiphase Technologies that allows us to pretty easily, uh, uh, you know, set up a survey like this for a particular objective, and then to uh, actually make a 3D uh, uh, image of of resistivity variations in the uh, in the subsurface. You know, dependent, of course, on Getting enough data in in 3D as well, so you could imagine that we could put our uh, our our uh, current electrodes uh, in red, you know, anywhere across the landscape, and our potential electrodes anywhere else across the landscape. Now, the distance between the current electrodes doesn't have to be the dis same as the distance between the uh, the potential electrodes, the voltage electrodes. For instance, there's a time honored uh, way. Called the uh, the pole dipole array, where you take one of those current electrodes and you basically move it off to infinity. You know, if we're working in one valley, then we might, uh, uh, you know, over a plot or a prospect that's uh, maybe uh, you know a square kilometer in size. You know, we might we might move that uh, uh, that first uh, that remote current electrode. We might move that to the edge of the valley or. If you're trying to profile the whole valley, maybe the next valley over. Okay, so it's you know in the context of our uh, um, of our survey area, you know the remote electrode is not at infinity, but it's it's far away. Okay, and uh, that makes the math a little bit easier. So in our survey area, we have one of the current electrodes, and then we have uh, we go around and measure with our potential electrodes. Okay. Now you can actually do a pole pole survey as well, where you uh, you also remove one of the uh, 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 potential electrodes. So here it says to remote current electrode, but it should be to remote potential electrode. You put one of the potential electrodes far away as well, okay? And uh, you know maybe they're both outside the valley on opposite sides, and uh, uh, and then you just have two. Um, uh, Electrodes to move around, uh, and then um, uh, there are uh, you know so those are very general uh, uh, setups uh, uh, for uh, four electrodes right. We're, we've got two two current electrodes, two potential electrodes, just like on the rock sample here, okay. And um, you guys use in the field the uh, the Wenner array, where the spacing um, between the potential electrodes. Uh, the green ones is called A, and then uh, one potential, you know, and and the potential electrodes are always centered on the in between the current electrodes, and we maintain a distance of uh, 
of uh, A also between you know the uh, the current electrode and the nearest potential electrode. So the whole width of the array is three A, and uh, I think you found that to be uh, one of the simpler uh, kinds of uh, surveys to do. Um, and you you don't but you don't have to um, uh, you don't have to uh, do it that way. You can keep you can make the uh, distance between the potential electrodes uh, larger or smaller than a, right? Maybe here we still have the same three a distance between the uh, um, uh, between the current electrodes, but we've made the electrode the the potential electrodes uh, uh, closer together. Okay, and uh, that's a that's a valid way to do it too. Now. Um, Uh, what you uh, uh, what you see here is is that there's uh, uh, many different setups, and each one might have some advantages and disadvantages in uh, in different situations. And of course, uh, they might require different equipment. Okay, particularly uh, you know with these uh, remote uh, current and potential electrodes for say the pole pole uh, deployment, you need a whole lot of wire, right? Um, so that's uh, uh, maybe a little bit harder to uh, to mobilize than uh, than some other kinds of surveys, like the winter array that uh, we very easily did uh, in multiple places. So the basic concept of an Earth resistivity uh, measurement is uh, you know maybe uh, we'll do a Schlumberger uh, survey, which by the way is is named after the uh, that's the surname of the two. Uh, Brothers Schlumberger, uh, who were French geophysicists in uh, uh, the 1930s, and they basically invented the uh, resistivity survey technique. Um, and the company they started is uh, one of the giants in, in oil field services, um, and uh, even has an office now in uh, in Reno. So uh, uh, there's uh, potential for uh, 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 even uh, you know that that. Uh, They'll eventually uh, you know, give some internships to uh, students like yourselves. Um, so that's a very uh, long-lasting piece of innovation that the Schlumberger brothers made. And here's one of their surveys, uh, you know, shown in cross section, uh, where we have the current electrodes and and they're putting current lines into the ground. Okay, and uh, we have uh, you know the green material which has one resistivity, and the uh, a layer two, the gray material, which has, uh, which has, uh, looks to me like a, uh, a smaller uh, resistivity. Okay, and we're trying to uh, no, actually, it should have a uh, uh, layer two should have a greater resistivity. So um, uh, we make a plot of the apparent resistivity we measure. Okay, and I'll show you. Um, you know, we, we get the we have the current, we have the uh, voltage we measure. And the resistance then is uh, V over I, right? Voltage divided by the current, and then uh, we get resistivity by multiplying by some geometric factor for that particular electrode array at its uh, at its spacing. Okay, so um, and then we change the spacing and we make another measurement. We measure another resistance. We come up with another apparent resistivity, and then we plot those as you did in uh, in the field. Uh, we plot apparent resistivity versus, you know, some geometric factor. You use the A spacing for a Schlumberger array. You would use the uh, the distance A B over two. That's half the distance to, between the current electrodes. Okay, uh, so that uh, is is another way to do it. Um, and uh, at very short distances, you know, you're basically only sampling the green material near the surface, uh, and so. Uh, very short uh, a b or two distances will yield uh, exactly that that resistivity and uh, then you you go up to very long uh, distances you know much greater than the depth of the uh, interface between layer one and layer two and you'll basically flatten out at the greater uh, resistivity the deeper resistivity and you can see there's a process of transition you know, there's some sort of smooth curve that transitions in between the two 
the two resistivity values. So that's a kind of an ideal uh, earth resistivity measurement. You know, we have multiple measurements showing that we're flat at row one at very small distances. We also have multiple measurements that are, you know, flat at the same, giving the same apparent resistivity at the very large distances. And of course, since the large distances require a lot more wire, um, that's the hardest part to get. Okay, and um, uh, so while it may be a, an objective, it may not be achieved. Now, the whole reason we're using, again, this four electrode uh, configuration is that uh, the earth resistivity is, um, is going to be smaller, it's more moderate than the um, electrical, electrode contact resistance, or if you like to think of it, the resistivity across this you know, tiny air gap between the, the stake that we hammer into the ground and the, uh, and the minerals that are in the soil there. Okay, so there will be a, a huge voltage drop across, you know, between the uh, the stake and the ground itself. Okay, and and that's what these um, uh, that's what these uh, four electrode configurations are trying to minimize. I mean, obviously, if the contact re resistance is is too high, you're just not going to get enough current into the ground to cause any measurable. Um, uh, you know any measurable difference across the two potential electrodes, but um, uh, barring that situation, you know the uh, uh, the four electrode method works quite well. Now I want you to start envisioning, you know, when you put that um, um, when you put that that current into the ground. Okay, uh, you know you've overcome the the contact uh, uh, resistance, right? And then if you have a material of of constant resistivity, right? Then the further away you get from the contact point on the current electrode, okay, the lower the voltage is going to be. You know, let's say, you know, the ground is basically zero voltage at some distance, and you put in, you know, plus ten volts. Okay, then uh, you know you're going to have um, uh, these equipotential surfaces, uh, which are going to be hemispheres, right? Uh, that end at the Ground to air interface because the air is uh, is an insulator. Okay, so uh, the current is going to flow radially, uh, you know, basically in all directions uh, down uh, away from the uh, from the electrode. Okay, and uh, if we have constant um, apparent resistivity, we're going to have uh, uh, these uh, nice equipotential surfaces. They're going to be uh, they're going to be spaced. At a constant distance dr too, you know, if you want to look at one volt of uh, of uh, uh, one volt of of difference, then it's going to be the same, you know, because the resistivity is the same. Um, it's going to be, uh, you know, one. Uh, uh, it's it's going to be one, um, you know, one a constant distance apart to to between those uh, those. Uh, one volt equipotential surfaces. So um, you know if you again if you just used a uh, standard you know resistivity meter like uh, we have in the tool bags, okay, that has only two electrodes, then what what you're really going to get is just that uh, that uh, um, uh, that contact resistance, you know, between the probes and the uh, and the ground, okay. And and it won't be the uh, the Earth's resistivity at all, okay? Because typically that contact resistance is is rather high. So let's let's look at some of these four electrode uh, uh, arrays, okay? And and we can start by uh, looking at the uh, uh, the equation for uh, getting the apparent resistivity of a uh, pole pole array. Okay, that's the simplest one, and and uh, you know, by making those equipotential surfaces, which is also how the uh, the software from MPT works too, uh, as well as the software uh, in the uh, Burr book, the Burr, Sheehan, and Jones book. All right, um, we can see that uh, you know here's the resistance, V over I is the resistance, and then the two pi a. That's essentially taking into account you know that length of the sample and the cross-sectional area. Okay, and a is the difference here. 
between the, uh, uh, you know, at least within the uh, the prospect, um, a is a di little a is the distance between the uh, the one uh, the one pole of current electrode and the one uh, pole of potential electrode, and then you think of that um, uh, you think of that that apparent resistivity rho sub a as being you know halfway between the uh, the two uh, poles the uh, of the current and potential electrodes, and also. Uh, at a depth that's where you know if you extend a forty-five degree line from each one, uh, that uh, that you get to. Okay, so the larger the distance, the larger the depth as well, and you think of that uh, apparent resistivity as being represented there. Okay, just in 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 you know simplification here. Now here's the the same equation for the apparent resistivity, right? You take the resistance. And for a pole-dipole array, you have a distance a between the potential electrodes, and then uh, some distance b between uh, the pole current, the one pole of current electrode, and the nearest, uh, the nearest uh, potential electrode, the nearest voltage measuring electrode. Okay, and so you have to multiply by two pi times b uh, times the quantity a plus b and divide all that by a okay and that gives you the apparent resistivity all right again that results from some pretty simple equations just looking at you know sending from the current electrode there are these equipotential surfaces that are uh, you know in, in hemispheres around that again assuming a constant uh, um, a constant, constant resistivity there's also a pole-dipole array. Uh, well, I'm sorry. In this pole-dipole array, right? Um, you can uh, describe the spacing as, uh, you know, from the single uh, uh, current electrode pole to the uh, the nearest uh, potential electrode. You can describe that spacing spacing not as b, but as some multiple n, some integer n times a, right? So you know, here this one might be three times a. And here's the equation in terms of uh, n and a instead of b, but uh, you know, not a lot of practical difference between these two. But uh, it is this is a standard nomenclature and standard uh, kind of um, uh, standard kind of, of uh, uh, a way of, of representing these. Okay, so two pi a times n times the quantity n plus one. Uh, times the resistance, which is V over I, right? The measured voltage over the 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 input and measured uh, current I, uh, and that gives you your, your uh, apparent resistivity. Now you you folks used a a winner array, which is really the simplest variant of of the pole dipole. So uh, the distant current pole at infinity is brought in, and all the electrodes are given the same spacing A. And so you have the centered uh, array here, which you then grew, you know, in terms of uh, having different A's, right? And um, and the, the apparent resistivity is two pi times A times V over I. Okay, and that's uh, you know one of the simpler ones. Now, um, if you use a, uh, a Schlumberger array, all right. Then you're saying, well, uh, I'm still uh, going to have a centered uh, A, but um, but I'm going to have, uh, and, and actually it might not have to be centered, but uh, assume here that it is, okay. And my distance, you know, maybe A is much 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 smaller than the distance, uh, even half the distance between uh, um, the. Uh, the current electrodes and the potential electrodes. Okay, so we'll call that that probably larger distance to be b. So you got the the apparent resistivity you calculate from the resistance v over i again times pi. Okay, no two here, but it we have b times the quantity b plus a divided by a. All right, and that uh, uh, that will let you figure that out. Now, if you assume that a is is much less than the b, then uh, you can make a little bit simpler equation, okay? 
right? You just have v over i uh, times uh, pi times b squared, right? This a fades into obscurity. Uh, you still got to divide by a there. B squared over a, pi b squared over a. Okay. Now for your in general dipole dipole array, and you can see that the you know the Schlumberger and the and as well as the uh, the winner are, are kind of just special cases of this, right? The apparent resistivity is uh, given by uh, you, you've got a you've got a, a spacing between uh, you know both dipoles. Okay, in this dipole dipole array, the current dipole, the potential dipole, they they're both spaced at A. Okay, simple enough. And then this the distance between the two dipoles is uh, n times A. And this often uh, works very well. Uh, notice that you don't have to have a whole lot of wire here. So uh, this this might be a very efficient way of uh, of conducting it. Um, we can't do it with our uh, mini res, right? Because uh, both the uh, the current source and the and the potential measurement, the the voltage measurement, are in the same box. So we, we can't get around having a lot of wire. But if you have the two split between different boxes, then you could have some larger distance n a n times a some integer n times a between the uh, the two dipoles, okay. So in that case, the apparent resistivity is v over i times uh, pi times a times n times the quantity n plus one times the quantity n plus two. So the uh, the electric potential varies as one over r um, along around a single current electrode on a homogeneous half space, okay. And uh, you know, so you put a uh, you know positive ten volts, and you're going to have a kind of uh, decrease depending on the distance you are in the ground away from in, in you know the ground of constant resistivity rho. Okay, it's going to vary dependent. The voltage is going to depend on the distance depend on the distance between the uh, the current electrode and, and where you're looking. Okay, and you are sampling it over here, for instance, with a potential electrode. So. You can, uh, you know, using that simple radial uh, uh, relationship, you can easily find the the voltage if you have a, you know, assume, you know, maybe plus ten volts uh, here at C one and minus ten volts here at C two, with that uh, assumption of of uh, apparent of uh, constant uh, resistivity, right? Then you just, uh, you know, you have R one, you have R two, and you go through the equation, and uh, you can get. Uh, the potential at any given depth. Okay, so here's our uh, maybe a Schlumberger array. You know, not, doesn't have to be centered. We have the uh, the source and sink of the current electrodes C1 and C2. We measure it at some point on the surface with the two potential electrodes P1 and P2. And uh, you know, so we have R1 between the source and P1. We have R2 between the sink and P1. Uh, we have R three between the source and P two, and and R four between the sink and uh, and P two. All right, and so uh, you know there are the R's, and then uh, you can uh, here's here's a uh, uh, a a, a cross section showing you what the voltage would be, okay, <coughs> uh, between these uh, uh, in the ground in a cross section. Uh, between the the two um, uh, between the two electrodes and, and around the two electrodes, so we have the, our two current electrodes, right? And um, <clears throat> and then uh, you know here are some relative contours, right? We've got uh, a negative voltage being put into C applied to C two, positive voltage being applied to C one, the same you know positive and negative voltage. And so the you know right at the perpendicular bisector in this cross section between C one and C two, we have a zero voltage line, and if we say sample at any two points across here, you know we just not need to count the number of contour lines that 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 uh, uh, measurement dipole the the potential dipole crosses, and that'll give us the voltage difference. Okay, so that's uh, how these things uh, get calculated. All right, now. Knowing that, uh, uh, let's go back to this again. You know, current is flowing everywhere uh, perpendicular 
to the uh, 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 everywhere perpendicular to the, uh, the 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 constant voltage contour lines. So you know, there's even current, uh, even though uh, you know we got plus ten volts on C one and minus ten volts on C two. You know, there's some current that's flowing out here. You know, out to the left and away from C two. It's flowing from C one to C two, but it's it, it starts out by going away from C one. I think you can see that that you know, say we start away from C one here, um, and we we work our way down the. Uh, uh, the the potential surface, and it starts to turn, and eventually we're we're heading towards C two. We cross that middle line, and then we go up, and we can, you know, keep a perpendicular path to the uh, the lines of uh, equal equal potential, okay, and then climb up towards uh, C two, and that'll be a, a a current line, okay. So we've got here. Um, uh, on the right, okay, we've got um, uh, we've got some lines drawn perpendicular to the uh, the contour lines, as so these are current lines. But what we're representing here is how much of the total current between the two is uh, is contained above each each of these labeled current lines. Okay, so we take the current line that you know is very shallow and goes almost directly between C one and C two. There is, of course, a current line, you know, at the surface. But if we take uh, this shallow current line, okay, uh, and do an analysis, we find that uh, you know, ten percent of the total current between the two flows, um, you know, in, in this constant resistivity medium. Ten percent of the current is above that uh, that current line, okay. Fifty percent of the current is above. You know this current line, and that current line goes to a certain depth, right? Seventy percent is above that current line, okay? Uh, and and if we make a graph of the percentage of current uh, as a function of the uh, the 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 current electrode uh, the the depth uh, divided by the current electrode separation, right? And we look for one, okay? So the the you know, at, at the depth where um, uh, that's equal to the to the uh, to the say a spacing, which is or three a for a winter array, which is the current uh, uh, electrode separation. Okay, some number of meters, right? At that same number of meters of depth, we find that that more than seventy percent of the current is above that. Okay, so there's thirty percent below, right? You got to get to hundred percent, but most of it's above. Okay, in this constant uh, resistivity medium, and that's a very important concept because this is how we get our depth sensitivity, right? If um, you know we have ninety percent of the current, uh, or eighty-five percent of the current, which is going above our uh, uh, our our um, uh, Above the depth to some change in the uh, in the in the apparent in the resistivity, okay, then we're never going to see that. You know, it's as if we're in a uh, uh, a half space. You know, once we get once we start to get more than thirty percent of the current, you know, below that interface and into that other medium that has a different resistivity, then we can start to see it in our. Uh, you know, it's going to start affecting our experiment. So here's uh, uh, an area with a uh, a constant uh, a constant uh, uh, depth, uh, uh, a transition between a low resistivity above and a and a higher resistivity below. Row two is greater than row one. Okay. And um, uh, these are uh, some situations here, where um, uh, you know, let's say. Um, Let's say our our current electrode separation is much less, okay, than the depth of the interface. All right. In that case, uh, our our apparent resistivity that we're going to measure at those uh, electrode separations, those small electrode separations, okay, are going to be about equal to uh, to row one. Okay. 
Uh, let's look at the, on the right hand side at the other uh, the other situation. All right, the um, uh, here you know what happens where um, uh, our uh, our our electrode separation our three A for a winter array is uh, quite a bit larger than the depth. Okay, well then. Um, uh, you know, row two will still be greater than the apparent resistivity we measure, but uh, they're going to be pretty close and, and both much, much more than, uh, than row one, which is the resistivity of the shallower material. Okay. And when we're about at, the, uh, at an electrode separation in the middle here that is uh, uh, similar okay, uh, uh, to the depth, right? Then uh, basically the uh, the apparent resistivity is going to be closer, but but a little above. Okay, not like when the when the spacing is real small, but it's going to be uh, only a little bit above the uh, resistivity of the top medium. And here we have um, there's there's two things. Uh, the the dot the dash lines are the current flow lines for a homogeneous subsurface, and the uh, gray lines are the current flow lines for this non-homogeneous subsurface, which which has this, you know, larger uh, resistivity as you go down. Okay, so uh, you know, looking at this, um, you know, if you have an interface, but uh, but row one is equal to uh, to row two, then uh, uh, you really don't have uh, much. Uh, um, you know, there's it's it's exactly as it would be. Um, you know, for a whole space, right? Because there's no resistivity difference uh, between these two. All right. Now, uh, you know, if you if you have a large enough uh, a space, a large enough spacing between the current electrodes, and row two is greater, then uh, you kind of refract the lines of, of current flow at the interface, and they're gonna the 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 current lines are gonna concentrate in the Upper medium, right? They're closer together here. The current lines are closer together here uh, because the upper medium is is where the uh, the uh, the upper medium is is uh, uh, is where most of the current will flow. It's got a lower resistivity, so it kind of short circuits, and very little current gets into the the higher resistivity material below. Okay. On the other hand. If below you have a lower resistivity material, which we often have uh, around here because we have you know relatively resistive alluvium above and then maybe tertiary clay lake beds below, okay, then that at the same distance will collect a lot more of the current lines and as it kind of short circuits the uh, uh, the the current flow uh, between the current electrodes. So uh, you know, one can write an equation just like uh, 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 just like the uh, uh, the Snell's law for optics and, and uh, seismic, right? Where uh, you have an incident uh, line of current flow, which is uh, uh, which is theta one, and you have a uh, uh, a refracted line of current flow at a at a different uh, angle to the normal to the surface. Uh, to the interface uh, theta two, you know, and that that's going to depend. You know, here this is uh, this example, row one is uh, is uh, greater than row two. Okay, for this example, the currents are flowing down into the uh, upper material, and row one is less than row two. Okay, here by a factor of five. Right, so you get sixty degrees and ninety degrees is uh, kind of how it will work. Um, you know, here uh, the lower medium uh, is short circuiting and, and collecting denser current lines, so uh, they're going to be uh, the current lines are going to be refracting to be more horizontal. Okay, so back to this uh, this concept here. Uh, you know, look at the uh, the current flow lines for in, that are dashed for the homogeneous subsurface. Look, look at the current flow lines for the horizontal interface. Uh, you know here where the down below is higher resistivity, and you can see that the current lines are shallower in the um, the lower resistivity material, and uh, deeper in the higher resistivity material. 